The following guide is in metric centimetres. If you would rather see this in imperial feet and inches, please click on the link and switch over now. Hello again. In this video I'm going to show you how to tile a roof. I know this has been covered by other videos on YouTube, but most of them don't actually tell you what you need to know. And that is how to lay out the roof, ready for tiling. Without this, any roof will either be a mess to look at, or even worse, leak. Let's just have a quick look at this roof a bit closer up. What you're looking at is even tile spacing and the correct overlap of the roof tiles. This is essential for any pitch roof with tiles or slates, and without this you won't be tiling any roof worth having. If you set out the roof wrong, you will end up with something like this, and apart from its many, many faults, the tiles are too stretched in this section, causing it to leak. And here the stretching became so bad that an extra row of tiles were shoved in here. You would be amazed, and I know I still am, how many roofers and builders fall into this trap. So let's not follow them, and this is how to tile a roof. Starting here with good old Photoshop, I'm going to deconstruct this roof and show you how it was created, so you can do exactly the same thing with your roof. Let's take this picture to be your newly stripped roof ready for tiling. Make sure that the roof rafters or trusses are fully clean of any splinters or old nails that may ruin the membrane or under tilers felt that's going to go on next. The next step is to roll out your chosen under sarking, starting at the bottom. This can be, for instance, a traditional reinforced felt, sometimes known as 1F, or under tilers felt, or under slaters felt if you're under slates, or a newer breathable membrane such as this. Here I've chosen 1F under tilers felt for illustration purposes. Starting at the left or right, roll out a length of under sarking. Now secure one edge with 25mm galvanised clout nails. Nail firmly into position but not so hard that the under sarking is damaged or ripped. Now gently pull your chosen under sarking taut from the other end, however you do not want it tight. What you're looking for is a suggestion of sag between the rafters. This is so in the event of water making it past the tiles, either by breakages or other exceptional weather conditions for instance, the water will be drawn into the dips in the under sarking and down and into the gutters and away. Once you have the desired tautness, fix the other end of the undersarking with some more nails, and then fill in with a few more nails. There's no need for too many nails though, as the battens or lasts that you're going to be putting on later will hold the undersarking firmly in place. Next we need to work out the tile spacing and batten spacing for your roof. This is called the gauge. This is normally specified by the tile manufacturer or the tile supplier. For my example, I'm going to show you the most common for this type of tile. Firstly, get two of the roof tiles you will be using, and two roofing buttons, sometimes known as roofing laths. Now place these onto the roof without nailing them. This will mean you can adjust the gaps between the buttons at will. Make sure the tiles are overlapping, and that the tile lugs are seated and properly hooked onto the top of the buttons. Now set the bottom tile overhang. Normally this works out at about 50 millimeters. There's no critical measurement for this, but it needs enough overhang so rainwater enters the gutters without dribbling down the fascias, whilst allowing easy gutter cleaning and maintenance should that be required later. Here are the roof tiles set into the gutter. Now let's set the overlap for the tile itself. On this smooth gray, it's 75 millimeters. If the tile is sand faced, facing a windy direction, on a shallow pitched roof or prone to moss build up, it may be advisable to increase this overlap to 100 millimeters, let's say. The initial spacing for the buttons with a 75 millimeter tile overlap is 33.5 centimeters measured from the top of one button to the top of the other. This is called the gauge. 
Now fix the battens in place using a galvanised nail that penetrates through the batten and into the rafters underneath for a minimum of 40 millimetres. To make sure the bottom two battens are parallel, measure off a reference point like a wall or fascia at the bottom of the roof underneath the undersarking. Now this is the bit a lot of builders and roofers get wrong. With the bottom two laths now fixed in their correct position, measure from the top of the batten to within 30 millimetres of the apex of the roof. As you can see here, by not putting the tape at the very top, you allow a small gap to fit the tile lugs into, plus a little bit of extra room so roof expansion or contraction doesn't damage the tile lug should that occur. Let's say, for example, that the distance is 458.5 cm between the end of the tape and the top of the last batten. As we worked out earlier, the desired space between the battens is 33.5 cm, so we need to divide 458.5 by 33.5, which leaves us with 13.68. Now 13.68 isn't a workable figure, so we round it up to 14. This means we are going to need 14 rows of batten to tile successfully to the top of the roof. Now that we know we require 14 rows of batten, we can divide the remaining distance of 458.5 cm by 14, which gives us 32.75 cm. So now we know that 32.75 cm is the correct gauge for the rest of our battens. To double check this, you can multiply 32.75 by 14 and you get the distance of 458.5. Now, by using our batten gauge of 32.75 cm, we can work our way to the top of the roof. Overlap any undersarking by 150mm or thereabouts every time you lay a new length. Your roof is now set out and ready for tiling. As for ridge tiles and verges, I'm sure I will cover these another time, but here is the roof tiled. In the UK, it's traditional to nail every third row from the bottom row of tiles and then the top row. Obviously this may be different in other countries that maybe experience different weather conditions. Make sure when nailing your tiles down that it penetrates into the roofing button but not out of the other side as this will damage your new undersarking. If your roof has an edge or verge try to overhang the tiles by 40 to 50 millimeters and always try to space the tiles so a high profile part of the tile is on the very edge. This directs any rainwater from dribbling over the edge and onto the walls of the building. Sometimes a cut may be required to achieve this, but again, cut it on the highest part of the tile. And if you're using a flat profiled interlocking tile, always try to stagger every course so that the vertical joints do not sit directly above each other. Well, once again that brings another project to an end. I hope this video has helped in some way and thanks for watching.